Hello and welcome to BJA Today. I'm BJ, of course. You know, today is a fun day for me because I get to meet every time we do an interview. We have wonderful guests, but this guest is especially fun for me because I usually talk to his wife, but now I get to talk to him. The gentleman I have before me today, before you as well, is Gary Powell. He is the co-publisher of Oz Magazine and the Georgia Okay, get it right. Georgia Film, film and, and Television TV. Resource Sourcebook. Sourcebook. It's about this big. The great thing about that book, Gary, is that it is the go-to book for all things film and television. You can find just about whatever you need in there. You really can. Um, and it's we've done it since 1991. It's been a real pleasure. It's it's fun to work with people in this industry, and we we really enjoy it every day. You know, what I found interesting about the book is that I've been in Atlanta for many, many years before the book ever existed and in this industry and not being able to find people easily to do the things that you want to do in production. Your book really brings it all together. But this book was in the mind of this crazy lady named Tia Powell, your wife, who I love sincerely, <laughs> but she's a nut. She is crazy. I mean, marrying me is proof of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, she's she's the star of the show. We always say that, um, uh, but she's not much of a public speaker. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I'll, I'll be glad to put words in her mouth. <laughs> Very good. Let's do that. <laughs> well, what do you think was the the hardest part for you guys when you began this mission? I know that she was already rolling, and you were. Your background is quite amazing. Oh, thanks. It really is. From law to uh, actually practicing, and then there's some scientific stuff in there. What haven't you done? Well, I don't know. They say people change careers five or six times these days, so I guess I kind of did that. I, I wanted to go to med school. I majored in biology and chemistry. Decided to major in human relations instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, went to law school, had a great time, practiced law, and... Um, how many happy old lawyers are there out there? Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, it's been great. I've worked with my wife since 1994, and for the most part, we get along. Everybody gets crossways sometimes. <laughs> uh, but we've persevered, and, um, you know, we're still growing and happy and in our relationship and our business. How did you all see this industry when you started versus where you see it today? Well, to me, it was a really big deal. Um, I'm from small town, kind of a Southern guy. Uh, well, I am a Southern guy. <laughs> uh, she had worked in the industry. Part of our kind of agreeing to get married was uh, we had to find a city. She's from Canada. So we had to find a city with a good uh, production background and I'm, I wanted to stay in the South. So Atlanta was kind of a logical choice was back in 1990. Uh, and then she came uh, we got married. She came to Atlanta. She was waiting on her green card to go back to work as a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And she approached the film office about volunteering for different things. And they said, oh, by the way, we're trying, we've been doing this directory. We hate doing it. And she said, well, I've done a directory before. And so they put it up for bids and she won it. And, and the rest is history. Yeah, she started in uh, our first apartment with a typewriter and a telephone and um, one assistant. You know, when I look at the all the different facets that the book itself has, it, as I said earlier, it is the go-to book, but it's also a resource for not just people here in Georgia, it's, it's so vast. I can connect myself with people who deal with people here in Georgia, but they're in LA and Charlotte and this place and that place, but it has so many different elements. I've got to ask, as on my costuming side, there's so many different areas that people don't think about. In my particular area, there's costumer, there's stylist buyers, there's uh, buyer, there is uh, presser, dresser, all those different elements. But when you guys do that book, it all comes together very seamlessly. Why that? particular format, that particular style of doing it. How has it helped you grow within this industry? Well, 
you know, there's a ton of data in there. I mean, the book is it 650 really is. pages. There's like 3,000 people in companies. Um, who knows how many thousands of phone numbers and emails and stuff like that. And we just, we have a system that doesn't allow us to make mistakes. And we're very personal with people. I mean, uh, today I probably talked to 30 different people. Mm -hmm. um, just, hey, how's it going? How's business? You know, what you're working on? And, uh, you know, the really nice thing is I say this and, and my staff thinks I'm crazy. I say, when, when you work on the source book and somebody calls you to get a listing, don't say thank you. And they're like, what? And I'm like, listen <laughs> to them. They'll say thank you because they really feel like we're doing something to help them. We do. And they, and my staff, you know, new people, they're like, oh, I don't know about this. And <laughs> I'll put a little jar out and you've got to put a dollar in there every time you say thank you. <laughs> so they stop saying thank you and they hear it. And it works. One of the things that I think is so wonderful about your group and your staff, and it, it really does seem like a, a community of people who really like working together, is that no matter when I call, somebody knows how to service my needs. You know, it, it may not, the first person will say, okay, let me check this for you. I'll go get this for you. Da, da, da. And it, it happens and it gets done. And it's very friendly. I'm not stuck on hold with a Muzak sound in the <laughs> background. But that's part of you all's success. I want to come back to how you guys met, how you make it work, because nobody works together 24 hours a day all the time. And it goes well. Well, that's what they say anyway. I want to tell you, from what I know about these two, not only does it go well, but it goes kind of funny, too. We'll be back in a moment. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Your daughter is having trouble learning French. Do you A, hire a tutor? Bonjour. B, enforce a French only rule at home or C, watch some foreign films. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. My guest is Gary Powell, and we've been talking about all the wonderful things this source book really does for us. But, you know, I got to roll it back a little bit. You know, I was teasing you and saying, how do you guys work together? But my husband and I work together all the time. So, and people always say the same thing. How do you do this? But it works, right? It does. Um, you know, it's, it's different for a lot of people, but I think back to, uh, you know, people on the prairies moving yes. west and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, if you're on a farm, like my grandparents were, they were partners in business. Yeah. That was the family business and they were partners in it. And it really happened, I think, a lot more in our history, if you will, then, yes. then it has not happened. Yeah, because right now we're, we're like the oddity as, as, as couples, right? You know, yeah. your, your family and my family, people are saying, how do you all do this? But this is the way family works. But when you get together and you have decided that this is the business that you're going to do together, obviously you have to take a role and she has to take a role. How did that work? Who's the creative and who's the administrative and make sure that the dollars come in and everything balances out? You know, she does, she's the creative one. She's, like I said, she's the star of the show. She has the big ideas yes. and things like that. I'm a little bit better on the execution side, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like computer and database stuff and things like that. More of a kind of a empirical marketing angle. Yes. But she's the one that goes out there and meets and greets and um, does the one-on-ones and, and kind of gets the, the, you the, know, ball the, the advertisers. 
She's what, the main one. This is the thing that has really been special about the source book in itself, is that there was the source book, and then all at once I looked around, and I, I always felt like Oz Magazine came first. And I just, and earlier speaking with you, you said, no, 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 it was a source book. But the magazine is so creative and so different. The covers are always wildly creative. The inside is always great stories. And for production people, you really get to find out what other production people are doing. And the stories are real. I hate those stories that are so surface that I'm not really finding out how the business works. But when I go to Oz, I really do find out how it works. What was the process in getting that magazine going? And, and why did you guys feel that it was important instead of just sticking with the source book? Sure. Um, Tia's got a, a passion for the industry because she worked in the industry. She really cares about people that work in the industry. Mm -hmm. She also has publishing in her family background. So she always had the kind of itch to do a magazine. Um, so it just, once she kind of got the, the source book rolling, she wanted to branch out and she'd always had that, that desire to do a magazine. So she got started with it. What do you think is the allure of the magazine for those of us who are in the industry, but also the people that are not in the industry? Because I see a lot of people who are not in the industry talking about it, wanting to copy of it, it just amazes me. What is it? I, I, you know, it, they are pretty. I've got to give a lot of credit <laughs> they are to pretty. Um, Tia, of course. She's, I don't have an eye for that kind of stuff. But also our art director, Kelvin Lee. Mm -hmm. I'll give a shout out to Kelvin. He's a great guy. He's, I think he's a design genius. He doesn't do our covers, but he picks the artists for every issue and they're brilliant, I think. For the most part, they're really right on. They yeah. really are. As the industry has changed in Atlanta and certainly in Georgia, your source book and Oz Magazine have really been a part of the push. It's the place to go to find out the information, of course, but it's also the place to go to find out who's doing what and why they're doing it and, and how we can better achieve what we're interested in. The stories themselves, the interviews. How do you all come to a place where you really dig in there? You you don't do the surface interview. How do you do that? Well, we've got good writers. We have good freelance writers. Mm -hmm. I've got a saying in the office, it's the people. It's the people, it's the people. We're not a magazine about technical things, equipment. Uh, we want to know the story, kind of like we're doing here. I want to know the story of how people got to where they are. Mm -hmm. I feel like nobody is an overnight success, or I say, we, we, you know, it took us 28 years to become an overnight success. Everybody's story is like that. There's nobody that comes in this industry and is just successful right away. Maybe actors and actresses, mm -hmm. but really not the people working in the industry. It's it's tough. You got to work hard. You got to keep at it. You got to keep pushing. And that's what we always want to. And, and we like bringing the community together. We we want this to feel like a community. And every, you know, I think everybody feels like they have a stake in the community and we help to kind of give that to them. As, as the years have gone and you've seen all of these changes happen in our industry, we've gone from just having a movie here and a movie there to being number one, all guns blazing, Georgia is it, mm -hmm. $9 billion plus and you are in the center of this tremendous growth. We, uh, I say now to people that ask me kind of this kind of question, we used to know everything and everybody. Now we're just trying to keep up with half of what's going on because it's really bonkers. It's fun though, it's, it's you know, we're not, we don't feel like we're holding the tiger by the tail, but it, it's a wild ride. We're meeting a lot of really good new people um, and it's fun having new people get to know us. So it's, it, we like it, it's, it's been a great experience. Well, here's what I know. You know stories that we don't know. And when we come back, we're gonna find out some. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%, that's almost half the food we produce. 
Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? So the question becomes, where is Georgia headed? And you know Gary Powell knows. So Gary, tell me, there's some secrets out there that we really as an industry haven't totally grasped, but there's a big engine called Georgia and lots is going on. Give us a clue as to what you see as the place that we're headed. Well, right now, I kind of feel like we're a factory somebody else owns the factory mm. and they own the stuff that's put in the factory and they own the stuff that comes out of the factory. We're, we're the factory workers right now. Yes. You know, the goal is to fill up screens, big and small, Yes. with our own content, control the intellectual property, control the finance, the distribution, the marketing, all those things. That's where it should be ultimately headed. That's kind of the brass the brass ring. Mm -hmm. The Atlanta Film Commissioner, uh, Christopher Hicks, has a really good take on it. He's from the music business and he saw how it worked like that in the music business, mm -hmm. up close and personal. So the example is Tyler Perry. Yes. Tyler Perry is a perfect example of that. He's, he's not the factory, he is soup to nuts, he does it all. So and, that's the model. And that is the way that we are not looking at a dip in what has become such a booming industry for us, is that if we are developing the content, if we are owning the content, if we are marketing the content, if we are doing all of the creative processes and packaging and putting the bow on it, then it stays within Georgia. Yes. One of the things that is a constant conversation whether I am around actors, producers, directors, anyone in the industry, is how do we maintain this level of great income with $9 billion plus, but also get that intellectual property, get that marketing side, get that branding, uh, get the logistics. How do we do that and not lose the marvels? and all of the others that are here. We don't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. We just want to come alongside and own too. How do we do that? I think a couple of ways. One is people coming here from New York and Los Angeles primarily to work on these projects uh, are going to find out that Atlanta's a really cool city. Yes. <laughs> and different than New York and LA. Me personally, I could never live in New York or LA. I can live in the big city of Atlanta. <laughs> it still has a small town feel exactly. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And people are still coming in from all over, so you can find, it, there's no sense of snobbery, I guess. I don't want to say that LA and New York are, it's, but it's different there. But they don't have the hometown charm. There is a certain Southern there's hospitality. There's something here. about that Southern hospitality. So as more and more of those people come, then more and more of that finance, intellectual property will come. Also, you know, it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money in Atlanta. Yes, it is. And it's not being invested right now in film and television projects because they don't really know how to, you know, do that. More and more people will educate the kind of the investment class and the investment class will become interested in financing more projects. And it sounds like the conversation needs to be open further because I don't think that in the circles of the Atlanta power structure of money, if you will. Mm -hmm. This is not filmmaking, production, content building, is not necessarily the big conversation. 
It just isn't a part of, has not been a part of Atlanta's way of thinking, of Georgia's way of thinking. Now we have to shift gears and not miss the boat, if you will. Absolutely. We have the Tyler Perry, we have Ted Turner, mm -hmm. uh, but now Ted has stepped off into a whole different world himself. And there has to be people who take the lead and see the things that you're talking about. See that content providing is important and owning every part of the process for our state mm -hmm. and our communities is vitally important. As you've been here, uh, you guys got married in 90... 1989. 89, and then the magazine started after in the 94. source. And then the source book started in... Uh, she started working on that in 1990. Goodness, so it's been a roll. What's next for Mr. and Mrs. Powell in terms of all of these things coming together? Because if anybody knows what's gonna come next, the people who are talking to the people no, and that's you guys. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not sure what is next actually for us. We, we've kind of been kicking it around and we're still trying to get our arms around exactly what the company should do. Um, you know, you're always supposed to have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, stuff yes. like that. We don't quite have that down <laughs> yet. Um, but whatever we do, it's, it's going to continue to be all about building community, getting to know more people, having more people know about us and just trying to support the community any way we can. I'm sure eventually we'll try to figure out how to get into content creation and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, right now we're, we're happy building the tree fort. You know, I continuing. love that concept, building the tree fort and then someone else is building their tree fort and someone else is building their tree fort. And as they continue to build theirs, they come over and help you build yours. That's, a, that's the independent movie, you know, making your own independent movie. That's I the way it works. It. Everybody brings a different tool, worked on yours for a while, they will go work on the other one for a while. Absolutely. That's the way. We can always find all the different tools, all the different people we need by just going to the source and you guys have the greatest book ever. Well, thank you. I Truly, I love it. I just flipped the pages and go, there they are. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. It is my pleasure and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Tia, hate you weren't here, girl, but we know you're doing some great stuff. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Make sure you check out Oz Magazine and that source book is one you will never put down because it has everything. Just keep flipping. I'm BJ Arnett for BJA Today. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye.